One pillar of modern Android development is distribution. The Android App Bundle is the new and official publishing format for Android applications. With the Android App Bundle, we created a publishing format that unlocks, amongst other things, shipping smaller apps to your users. Smaller apps are more likely to be installed and less likely to be uninstalled when disk space gets tight. Today, we'll take a closer look at the technical aspects of how Android App Bundles can help to decrease your app's size. Getting started doesn't require any changes to your existing code base. All you need to do is create an Android App Bundle using Android Studio or the command line, and then uploading it to the Google Play Store using the Play Console. Once the bundle is uploaded, the Play Store can optimize the APKs it delivers to users' devices based on their configuration. This, in turn, reduces download and installation size. In this video, I will show you how that's done by taking you through the process of creating an app bundle, uploading it to the Play Console, and then showing you tools that you can use to examine the exact APKs that the Play Store generates from that app bundle. Let's dive right in. To generate a signed app bundle using Android Studio, select Build, then Generate Signed Bundle slash APK. On this dialog, make sure Android App Bundle is selected, then click Next. Here, you have to provide information on the upload key that you configured for Play App Signing. If you're wondering what an upload key is or how to enable Play App Signing in general, please check out the previous video in this series where this is explained in detail. Let me enter the key store password and key password, then click Next. We're using the build variant release, which can be shipped to users through the Play Store by default. After clicking Finish, the bundle is generated. When the app bundle is ready, you can open the event log and then click on Locate to open the path to the generated app bundle. Choosing Analyze instead opens the APK analyzer, which enables you to inspect the app bundle's content. Before we go ahead and upload the app bundle using the Play Console, I'm going to show you how the compilation and signing process works using the command line. We're essentially going to call the same commands that Android Studio invokes for you. This can be useful when you work with a remote machine, are writing a script for a continuous integration server, or simply have a preference for using the command line. Android projects ship with a Gradle wrapper. This wrapper invokes the declared version of Gradle and downloads it if necessary. Depending on your operating system, it's either Gradle W or Gradle W.bat. To bundle the application, I'm invoking the Gradle wrapper and then the bundle command. Since I want to build only the release variant and not all possible variants, I'm appending release, and then I kick off the build process. The app bundle now can be found in the build folder of the com Android application module. In our case, that is app. From there, we navigate to build, outputs, bundle, release. And here we see the Android app bundle that we just built. This is a release bundle that now needs to be signed. You can do this yourself in your Gradle script or by invoking the commands yourself. To sign this app bundle, we're using jar signer. We supply the key store location using the corresponding parameter and the key store location. And then I tell jar signer what it should sign. In this case, app release AAB. Since a key store can hold multiple signing keys, jar signer wants to know which key it should use. In order to tell it, I add the key store alias as the final parameter to this command. After hitting enter, I can add my super secret passphrase and then hit enter once again. No matter whether you choose to use Android Studio or the command line to build and sign the app, this bundle now can be uploaded using the Play Console. And that is what we'll do next. In your application's details screen, click on the preferred track you want to create your new release on. I'll roll this out to internal testers before opening it up to everyone. On the left-hand side, I select Testing and then Internal Testing. Here, I click on Create New Release. To get this going, I'll upload the app bundle that I just built and signed. I can either click the Upload button here or drag and drop the bundle in the dedicated area.
Once the bundle is uploaded and processed, we can take a look at the App Bundle Explorer. In the App Bundle Explorer, we can see an overview of some features of the App Bundle, such as supported devices, languages, and permissions. To explore the bundle, I click on the details arrow here, and then Explore Bundle. At this stage, we can take a look at how the Play Store decides what should be downloaded to the user's device. In the Downloads tab, we can see this in detail. Here, I can apply a lot of filters. They correspond to the optimizations the Play Store applies when generating a set of APK for installation on the device. The app I uploaded is the PlayCore KTX sample app, which is available on GitHub. You can find the link to the repository in the video's description. The sample app contains some rendered icons for different screen densities. So when I set the screen density to a specific value and download the APK set for a device, that will provide us with an APK that mainly contains the rendered images for that density bucket alongside some metadata. Let's go ahead and select devices with 440 to 450 dots per inch, or DPI. Clicking on the download icon at the end of the screen gives me the possibility to make some further selections and download the APKs for the chosen device. I'll download the default set. Now, let's see what Play had in store for us. The downloaded zip file contains several APK which are tailored to the specific device in question. Let's take a look. This is the zip file I just downloaded. Let's go on and unzip it. Here you see all the APK that were downloaded for the selected device, including all potential languages that are supported by the application. These are the exact APKs that would be delivered to a user's device with the chosen configuration, including the signature from Play App Signing. I did not configure languages in the download dialog, which is why there are so many different language APKs right here. Many users would only install a subset of these languages depending on their configuration. To install them all locally, you can run adb install multiple and select all APKs. While each APK in this set is relevant to guarantee correct execution of your app, I want to point out that the base APK always has to be installed on a user's device in order to provide your app's core functionality. Next to code and resources, the base module also contains the merged Android manifest and shared dependencies for the entire application. There could be exceptions, such as when your app has its own language selector built in, and you want to have all potential languages available for selection at all times. But even then, using the Android App Bundle provides you with ways to load features on demand. This could be used to avoid pre-installing parts of your app that only a subset of users might need. And since we want to enable you to download and install features in a programmatic way, we provide an unbundled API that you can use. It's part of the Play Core library, which is covered in the next video of the Modern Android Development Series, where we take a closer look at Play feature delivery. To get notified when new videos get published, subscribe to the Android Developers Channel. If you have questions on this video's content, please leave a comment. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.